Before Color Commentary, I'm Mark Allen, and this is uh, part two of the three video comic haul. One of the best hauls I've gotten in a long, long time, and I don't like to do super long videos if I can help it. 12 to 15 minutes is good, but uh, anyway, so I went through, last time I went through all the dollar comics and two of the wall books, the two wall books I got at the Wizards Asylum Comics and Games uh, sale, but now what I want to do is go through the books that I got from uh, a dealer there, great guy named Kerry Christopher Stone. Uh, these are mostly three dollar books, and then uh, I'll go through a few of my dollar books from Shadow Mountain Comics. Lots of great places to get comics in Tulsa, even though Comic Empire of Tulsa changing hands, and I've got high hopes for uh, for the new owner Kenny to uh, uh, to to keep that thing going and everything. But gonna it's it's uh, in a sense the end of an era with Mike McCormick uh, leaving. But I think Kenny can take it to bigger and better heights. So anyway, I'm gonna start with the three dollar books from Kerry Christopher Stone. And uh, starting with a lot of nostalgia here for me. Uh, always was a big fan of the Marvel team-up books. And um, uh, growing up, they're one of the main books that I read. Marvel team-up, Incredible Hulk, Amazing Spider-Man, ROM. Those four kind of, kind of define my early uh, comic reading experience. But uh, Marvel team-up number 17. Okay, in fact, you know what? Let's do this. There was actually only, in the group, there was only one $2 comic. And I'll start with that. Another series that I, that I love and been trying off and on just to slowly, not, not no hurry, but uh, slowly acquire a run of this. And it's uh, Not Brand Eck number 10. It is, of course, the worst of Not Brand Eck. And uh, I love those Severin covers on there. And I just love the humor and the art. And I just, uh, always something about that book. I never was a big mad fan or crazy fan, but I liked Marvel's uh, Not Brand Eck. Uh, you know, Marvel lampooning itself. Always lots of fun lampooning its own customers. Customers? Characters. Okay, there we go. Uh, don't lampoon your customers, Marvel. That's not a good idea. All right. Um, Marvel team up number 20, uh, number 17, 20 cents. Number 17, Spider-Man, Fan Mr. Fantastic. These, this is actually a Mole Man story by Gil Kane. Uh, normally, usually not a big Gil Kane fan, but I was on his Spider-Man stuff. And, um, but this is a fun book, and uh, like this is actually one of those books, one of the few Marvel team ups I didn't own as a kid. And uh, so anyway, uh, these are all these are all high grade too. Some of them will get oppressed due to creases and the like. But uh, so there's that one, and then there is uh, Marvel team up number 18, uh, the Human Torch and the Hulk, also a Gil Kane story. Blastar is the uh, main uh, vil villain in this in this book in this uh, in this story. Uh, this has got some, uh, this is going to be fun to press. This has got a very, very glossy, glossy cover, as you can see. Uh, and it's got the, this long, this is going to definitely be one of my uh, books that I press, do a pressing video on. I have to be careful. Oh, I think that chip came out. No, it didn't. There is a fold there. There's, there's a tear there that I have to be very careful to, to pin down when it gets pressed. But look at the gloss. You can see some warping up here. It's not water damaged. Uh, just humidity, I believe, and uh, so it's going to be fun to press. I think it's going to make it look a lot better. But the the, the gloss, the sheen, that's great stuff. But uh, again, that cover too, primary colors, the red, the yellow, the blue, the green. I mean, that's just a great and it's a fun cover to look at. And so it'll be fun to press, fun to do a pressing video on that. Uh, so that's Marvel Team Up number 18, Marvel Team Up number 21. Now this one. Uh, I had, as a kid, I had a reprint of in one of the Spider-Man Spider treasuries. And it is a Spider-Man Doctor Strange. It is, I can tell you, uh, Sal Buscema art. But that's a, it's a great uh, Gil Kane cover, but Sal Buscema art on the inside. And I know the Wand of Watoom was uh, featured, yes, featured very prominently in this uh, that opening splash page. Very Sal Buscema, very cosmic, very Marvel. And uh, so uh, anyway, this is a great, fun book. And um, again, just... You know, hat off, my hat's off to Carrie Christopher Stone for just the nice books. These are these came out of some boxes that they had just acquired and just kind of quickly priced them. And at three bucks a pop, I was very happy. Um, Marvel Team Up, this one I haven't, those two I read uh, last night. This one I haven't read yet, but the Marvel Team Up, The Human Torch and Thor, number, the Marvel Team Up, number 26. Number 26. Another great Gil Kane cover, just curious. Uh, these are all, it's with the exception of that Doctor Strange story, these are all Marvel team-ups I never had. Um, Jim Mooney, hmm, you know, okay, 
I'll read it. Never was a huge Jim Mooney fan, uh, but but lots of people were. Uh, but uh, I'll still read it. It'll still be great. Um, you know, classic Marvel storytelling and such. And uh, so great uh, story, great story there by Len Wein. Len Wein did all of those team ups. And um, so you know, and again, just one of those. That's a black cover there, and and really kind of a nice black cover. Not uh, no one spine tick. There you know, but uh, just really pretty cover, and so like that. Now this is another one. Um, this is another one that uh, figured prominently in my early comics reading experience: The Thing and Morbius, and uh, Marvel Two and One Number Fifteen. Uh, they're actually fighting the Living Eraser on there, and that's a lot of fun. Uh, very fun book, and uh, like that, like getting that nostalgia just does drive some of my collecting these days. Uh, Marvel Presents number five. I actually, this makes now, I think, the first six issues I think I have uh, of Marvel Presents. Another slow run. You know, you just gather these runs. Uh, you don't, I don't get in a hurry. I just gather them, uh, you know, as I can. That's another one that's in high grade. And uh, so, great book. Neat, just, just great Marvel books. Now, uh, let's stick with Marvel here for a bit. Um, Mar the, Marvel, the Doctor Strange um, stories in Marvel premiere. I've been working on those for a while, too. And... So I got number nine. These are Brunner uh, art, Brunner covers. So I got number nine. Love Frank Brunner's work. Okay, and number ten. Just some of these, just just so many of these Doctor Strange covers in in Marvel Marvel Premiere, as well as Doctor Strange, the first Doctor Strange series. Just classic covers, and then and uh, and then number eleven. And so Marvel Premiere number eleven with Doctor Strange. Love those books. Love acquiring those, and um, and then a couple of DC pieces here. Uh, number nine of the Witching Hour, Witching Hour. And this actually has a, a really cool Toth story, Alex Toth story in there. And I've got a Toth book. I need to Alex Toth book. I need to do a uh, uh, a um, bookshelf bounty on sometime. I actually, you know what? I don't know if that'll be a bookshelf bounty or a rousing reference material because because it's both. But anyway, so Witching Hour number nine. And I have a few of those and, and love getting those. They're always a fun read. Creepy, creepy read. You know, it's only been in the last eight, ten years of my comics reading experience at 52 years old that I've started enjoying some horror books and, and the old horror stuff. And so, uh, anyway, just, just incidentally by then. Now, this is, one, this is a book I don't generally get. In fact, this is the only one I have. They are reprint books, uh, reprint, Bronze Age reprints of Golden Age material. And it is Boy Commandos, number two. Um, the Simon and Kirby gig there, and, and uh, just a nice, really nice shape. It will also be pressed, but nice gloss. And that's why I got it, just because the cover is in sh such wonderful shape. But I uh, can't beat, if you can get good reprints of uh, Golden Age stories, uh, I like those, and I still like them in the floppies. I won't turn down a nice hardcover book at a good price, a hardcover reprint book, but I like the floppies, okay? Um, okay, just a few dollar books, uh, and then we'll then I'll save the rest for uh, the third video. But um, years, several years ago, back in the I want to say back in the '90s, there was a um, there was a four issue miniseries that Marvel did uh, that that starred its uh, its premier Western heroes. Actually, February of 2000 is when it kicked off, so right at the end of the '90s and the beginning of the 21st century. And it included uh, characters like uh, Kid Colt, the Rawhide Kid, the Two Gun Kid, Red Wolf, and uh, the Outlaw Kid, as well as and it, well, I'm not going to say anything else. But the thing about this, this was a uh, John Ostrander wrote this this series, and a guy named Leonardo Manco uh, or Manco did the uh, did the 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 art in all of these beautiful, glorious covers, uh, wonderful art, and I'm going to show you. Uh, but uh, the thing is, this is to me, this is one of my all-time favorite, maybe my very favorite, Marvel Western story. But here's the cover to number one, and I used to have a great big poster uh, that for about seven or eight years that hung on the wall in our house, um, in another house where we, when we lived in, in western Oklahoma, uh, that poster of this cover. And it was just, it looks like a movie poster. It's amazing. And I love that art. But here's, the, um, here's, here's what's, what just knocks my sock off. Here you have listed above here. You have these all these Western heroes, and it, and it talks about them sharing the world with the the Marvel Western heroes. 
and uh, Kid Colt, Rawhide Kid, the two gun, two gun Kid, Red Wolf, the Outlaw Kid, along with you know Gunhawk, Wyatt Earp, Reno Jones, Buffalo Bill, Wild Bill Hickok, and I know a couple of those were 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 Western comic book heroes as well. But uh, Billy the Kid and all that. So just a great great piece of art uh, by Leonardo Manco. But I uh, got all four issues of that. I've been wanting to go back and get that series again. Uh, for keeps sometimes because every page of every issue looks like that and so there's number one there's a book two and book three love the covers and book four and so just lots of fun with those books blaze of glory if you've never read it check it out you can find it uh, at least in our area you can find it a lot in bargain boxes uh, first couple of issues of Captain America the heroes return Captain America from 1980, from 1998, and it has Mark Wade writing, uh, Ron Garney doing the art. Love that cover. I also have the Sunburst cover uh, of that. Just happened to have it in issue number two, which there are also uh, two covers of that, two, two, an alternate cover. I don't know if that's the original or cover A or cover B. It doesn't matter to me. The story though is is great. Wade and Garney were a great combination on that book. Um, speaking of Captain America, a series I've never had before, though I always loved all the work that uh, Steve Rude did for, um, for Marvel, and I uh, have here a, a, a one I've never, never read before, but it's a Bruce Jones, written by Bruce Jones with uh, art by Steve Rude. It's Captain America, um, What Price Glory. Uh, now that, that one obviously Rude did the, the cover on there, painted cover, great stuff. I'm not even sure who did the uh, the cover on number two, well, or the others, but uh, wonderful stuff, and of course, wonderful Rude art on the inside, and I uh, always loved Steve Rude's style, and um, so I like the, like the cut of his jib, so to speak, okay, and then there's this, uh, I don't know who, who did the cover number three, but they're all gorgeous covers, and, uh, and then issue number four, again, Captain America, What Price Glory, Great dollar box finds. I'm gonna I'm gonna enjoy reading those, and I just just for, for no other reason than the uh, I mean I'm sure it'll be a good story, but the Steve Rude art. Uh, now um, back in the 90s, I also was the, the, uh, Travis Cheris really hit his stride and became established as a comics fine artist. We'll say uh, his early work, of course, was um, Dark Stars, and uh, I think that was I think that was the name of the series for DC. Uh, he did some other, he did a Flash Annual, I believe, and did work here and there, but then he began to do these amazing painted covers for Image and Wildstorm, and I would grab these, I would grab these books just for the covers, and I still today am missing a few of them, uh, but I'll go back and find them, and the one I got this time was Phantom Guard number one, that is that Travis Cheris cover, just beautiful stuff, and that at first looks like a smudge, but it's actually part of the illustration, okay, and so... Uh, but I love that. I just loved his style in these painted covers. He also did uh, his Wildcats X-Men crossover one shot. Uh, if, if you remember that from the 90s, every panel, practically every panel looked like that. It was just amazing, amazing stuff. So um, anyway, there's that. And then lastly, uh, these last last few. Uh, well, actually, we'll just go with these three. We'll go with these three Hulk and save those for next time. But uh, now these are beat up. But they're great reading copies. And first is uh, Hulk, Incredible Hulk number 168, first appearance of the Harpy. Now this was great, and again, just nostalgic as, as all get out, because again, this, this story I had in a Hulk, a big Hulk treasury size edition. And, um, and so uh, this was just a great the first appearance of the Harpy, and with the Harpy, you know, it's kind of cool, with the Harpy being a main character in the, the Immortal Hulk right now, but she's red. So I don't get that at all, but uh, so it's a great story there, beat up, but uh, I'm not going to, I am going to go ahead and bag and board that. I'm not going to put it on the spinner rack because it wouldn't survive for long there, I'm afraid. Um, and then there's Hulk number 170. This is one of those books that uh, I know the story, but I don't know where I first read it. Uh, I honestly don't know where I read this story, but it is Herb Trempe. And uh, I love Herb Trempe's art, especially when he's inked by the greats like Jack Abel, okay, but... But there's uh, Hulk 170, and then lastly, Hulk number 172. This is another story I had years ago as a kid. Well, years, years ago as a kid. It was a Hulk and Juggernaut, okay? And they do some fighting there, but they also kind of kind of do some team-up action, you know? But uh, beat up, again, but great reading. You know, just a great, 
great, you know, great fun story. Okay, by by Tony Isabella, writing and Herb Tramp doing the art, and so great stuff. So anyway, great dollar box finds, and uh, that's uh, part two of this haul. Uh, and so next next time we'll do part three and wrap it up. But anyway, uh, great dollar box finds. Don't shun the dollar boxes; it's worth the dig. Uh, you can find some great stuff in there and fun stuff. And so anyway, uh, thanks for watching Four Color Commentary, and I'll see you next video.